Hi, is it on? Yes, hi. Thank you, uh, Nadine. And uh, uh, I'm. Howard, how come you're the only one with a microphone? <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll pass it around. We'll, we'll pass it. You're getting a real dose of what life at NPR is really like, <laughs> and the collegial relations that uh, get our programs on the air every day. I'm, I'm delighted to be here with so many people who are associated with NPR. It's always nice to actually see the people uh, in the audience. Uh, and I, for one, am always struck when I do that. You don't look anything like what I thought you would look like. I um, thought, thought you'd all be a lot taller and have more hair than, uh, than you do. So uh, we have uh, been given an assignment to discuss the intersection of humor and politics in, I assume, a serious way. And I, I want to say that I think it's a measure of our affection for moment and uh, our respect for the Daniel Pearl investigative journalism uh, initiative that we've accepted this assignment uh, with its high risk of a fatally ponderous conversation uh, over, over the next uh, hour or so. At least we're doing it after everyone's had a couple of drinks, uh, which uh, may not affect the panel much, but I'm hoping it will lower the expectations of the audience. Uh, when I received an email from Moment uh, advertising the November issue, the email had a banner across the top describing this symposium on the intersection of humor and politics. And then right below it, it had headlines of the articles in the November issue. And the first one was, Anthony Weiner makes a comeback on Twitter. Uh, and uh, it, it reminded me of the sentiment uh, that Philip Roth expressed many decades ago. It's actually cited in the newest New Yorker uh, in a talk of the town piece on the, the Petraeus affair, which actually is the Petraeus affair, it's very, uh, in which uh, Roth said many years ago that you couldn't write political satire, fiction in America, because of the unfair competition from American political reality. Uh, it was... It was always, always several steps ahead of you. Uh, despite that fact, lots of people are producing satire and find something very funny about politics. Uh, a week doesn't go by when uh, someone doesn't tell me that they find the most reliable they, uh, information they get, always with a polite remark about NPR, is really from either the Colbert Report or the Daily Show. Uh, and uh, although it might be a different crowd, uh, the people who proudly call themselves ditto heads and listen to Rush Limbaugh, uh, regard him not just as a courageous truth teller, uh, but also as a hilarious commentator on the, on, on the passing scene. There's a lot of humor out there, a lot of political humor, and, and um, I'd like to hear a little bit from our panelists this evening about uh, uh, these, these two topics and whether we really do find or should find politics as funny as we do, since Bob Mankoff is all the way down there at the end. I'll start with you. I mean, is it... Is this funny stuff for you, uh, uh, Bob? Is it sure, uh, no uh, problem. I, I think we should make it, broaden it to the intersection of politics, humor, auctioneering. <laughs> and of course, the fabulous Four family, which really here, here. Here, here. <laughs> You know, it's, uh, one of the things that it struck me, the Four family is just fantastic, wonderful humor that they had. And everybody, everybody thinks uh, now humor is a fantastic, wonderful thing. But it's actually a relatively recent phenomenon. You know, we're here in the synagogue and everybody, you know, Jews are the people of the book and now we think they're the people of the joke. But if you actually look in that book, there's nothing funny. <laughs> when, God, when God laughs, you're toast. <laughs> There's, there's an interesting parallel. There's El uh, Elisha the prophet. He goes up to Bethel and he's bald and two, two uh, kids come out and they say, hey, you bald guy, you bald guy. And uh, two she-bears come out of the woods and tear them to pieces. <laughs> so, that's sort of, so it's always interesting to me when we're, you know, we're, we're in this environment where humor is basically looked at as a good thing. And you can see when it's a good thing with the, with the poor family, how it bonds people together. But its basic, its basic function in, 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 in politics is, uh, is ridicule. And uh, it, uh, you know, the whole idea behind humor, uh, the, 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 the justification for it, because it's very, really very cruel for the most part, is that it's gonna, it's gonna satire is gonna be corrective. It's gonna laugh folly out of existence. 
well, Folly's doing really good. <laughs> that hasn't happened, but I think this, for me, this political campaign was, was actually very interesting because I think, I think that- Hold that, the mic close, Bob, hold the mic. I, uh, I think you're the expert on that. I'm sorry. The, 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 you did see actually a really disproportionate use of humor between uh, uh, what, what the liberal media could do and the conservative media. The, 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 you really couldn't get an easy uh, uh, way to grab Obama stuff. It could be general. Jay Leno could tell a joke like, oh, uh, 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 you know, Obama's for strong sanctions because it'll cripple Iran's economy, and boy, does he know how to cripple Iran's economy. economy. But that's not personal. With Romney, yeah. you know, you could have a joke where Conan O'Brien could say, oh, uh, 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 you know, Obama's back, you know, uh, helping out with Sandy, you know, doing the necessary things, preparing for Sandy, and, uh, and Romney is, is putting his, uh, his uh, smaller houses in his larger house. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you could, in other words, you could get to something about Romney. So I did think that the... I thought the campaign, and if you look at all the jokes, you know, because I did, you know, look online, all the jokes about Romney versus all the jokes about Obama, it was, you know, it was, uh, uh, I think it did have an influence on many, many better jokes about Romney because you could get personal with Romney. And really all you could say about Obama's stuff is that he's failed.